drive that will access this particular uh, subdivision. The uh, public roads with respect to 28th Avenue, there'll be some additional right-of-way that is dedicated by this development for a future widening when and if that occurs for 28th Avenue. Um, what, uh, what we have discussed with respect to construction access and the use of 28th Avenue for this development is that the construction access for public improvements as well as do home construction would access the site from 28th Avenue from the south from the state line meandering and working its way through the Prairie Trails East subdivision to this particular development. No construction traffic is intended to pass north on 28th Avenue to 116th Street. What that means is that this development must wait for the Prairie Trails East subdivision to be constructed or there needs to be some cross-access easements provided in order to gain access through that subdivision to get to the subdivision for construction purposes. There were a number of concerns raised with respect to children walking up and down 28th Avenue. Again, we believe with no construction traffic headed north and with the monitoring of the hours and um, to monitor the activity in that particular area and discussing the matters with you Noshi know, Unified and the neighbors, that there should be no issues with respect to kids um, and the, the truck traffic coming in and out of the subdivision. There was a question raised early on whether or not this uh, water main could be looped to provide greater pressure for this uh, particular subdivision and the subdivision to the South Prairie Trails East. And this slide indicates that there is going to be a looped type system uh, between 28th Avenue, looping through the orchard, then coming through easements on lots 7 and 8 in the orchard subdivision through lots uh, 41 and 40 along the lot line through Prairie Trails and then looped around. Municipal sanitary sewer will need to be extended also as a developer cost. Uh, it's located in 28th Avenue. It will continue through the development within 120th Street and 29th Court. There were a number of questions raised on stormwater and flooding. I believe these were all answered at the Planning Commission meetings that were held regarding this project. The developer has designed a stormwater management plan that meets with the requirements of the village and the Wisconsin DNR. It identifies that there will be two ponds that will service this development, one on the east end, one on the west end. It talked about the ponds having a safety shelf, that there would be swales and berms to service this particular area, and that there would no, not be any additional um, concerns regarding stormwater because the water was not um, leaving the site at a faster rate that could be handled by the system, and the fact that um, this water is not going to be headed north towards the Tolden Creek, which was a concern of one of the residents. We did discuss at length stormwater pond safety concerns for this sub uh, particular development, and as I indicated, uh, there'll be a 10 foot wide safety shelf. The uh, developer agreed not to install any berms or, or screen fencing so that you couldn't see these ponds that are located on the property, but uh, they identified that there would be some landscaping and signage and, and other things to um, try to keep um, children from going into those pond, these pond areas. Again, as I mentioned, construction traffic, this slide illustrates where the construction traffic would wind through the Prairie Trails East to access this particular site. There are some questions with respect to street lighting for the, uh, the development. Street lights are proposed at the entrance and at any intersection within the development. The, uh, there will be other street lighting. The developer may use individual yard lights within the subdivision. The uh, neighbors requested that there not be <coughs> separate monument signage for this development. So they have taken that out of uh, their budget as well. The uh, developer has agreed to uh, cost sharing of additional funds, developer contributions in addition to impact fees in order to address current shortfalls in funding and fees that are collected for police, fire, EMS, and public works. And these impact fees will be used for future projects within the village. The uh, developer has agreed to um, enter into an agreement with uh, Ted Pickus and the uh, Prairie Trail East developers in order to facilitate the installation of municipal water through lots 41, 42, or 40, 41 in the Prairie Trail East subdivision. Um, there's also some discussion that if there's any damages to the completed gravel roadways, that the village would be doing the inspecting to see if any damages were incurred by the, uh, the orchard development. This is just a slide that we had used at the Planning Commission meeting to identify the uh, 
the uh, dwellings that existed on 28th Avenue and those that were currently vacant. With that, the, uh, the staff of the Plan Commission recommend approval of the preliminary plan for the Orchard subdivision, subject to the comments and conditions as outlined in the staff memorandum and those conditions set forth in Resolution 07-77 for the subdivision. Any other comments or questions? Motion by Mike, second by Monica for the discussion on this item. One question for Jean. Jean, uh, refresh my memory. These two outlets are wet or dry? Wet. Wet, okay, thank you. Other comments, questions? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. That moves us to item B and that is received the Planning Commission recommendation to consider resolution number. 07 78. This is to support an amendment to the village comprehensive plan for the request of Brown City Co. U.S. Cellular. He is the agent on behalf of uh, Kevin Tanega, property owner, and this is to change the land use designation of the 0.85 acres project property located at the east side of Sheridan Road at approximately 10900 block. Uh, this is from a low medium residential to government and institutional to coincide with the proposed. I-1, this is the institutional zoning of the property to accommodate a proposed upgrade cell tower facility. Gene, there's several other ones here. You want to take those all separately, though? I would like to make a presentation on both items B and C, so the next okay. item as well. we will take up uh, C as well. Go ahead. And with item C that I'm going to be discussing, there is a correction to the agenda. It should read, receive plan commission recommendation and consider a zoning map amendment. Ordinance 07 49 for the request of Ronald Zeckel, a U.S. cellular agent, on behalf of Kevin Canada, property owner, to rezone the subject property from the R4 UHO to the I 1 institutional district to facilitate a proposed cell tower facility located on the east side of Sheridan Road at approximately the 10900 block. So, again, that is a land amendment, not a text amendment. The uh, aerial photo on the, uh, on the slide. Um, identifies where the Kamega property is located just north of the uh, Village Summer Club property on Sheridan Road. A comprehensive land use plan amendment is requested then this evening. The amendment would be to modify the land use designation from a residential classification, which is low, medium residential, to the institutional designation. As shown on this map, all of the areas identified in blue are actually an institutional designation all of lands which are currently owned by the Village of Pleasant Prairie. This is in order to accommodate an upgraded cell tower facility for U.S. Cellular. The zoning map amendment would be for tax parcel number 934-123-301-0960. Again, this would be to rezone the property from the R4 residential UHO classification to an I-1 classification. U.S. Cellular has an existing 65-foot-tall cell tower that's located on the east side street. In addition, there are um, existing antennas to be relocated from this tower to the new tower, and a Kenosha County Civil Defense Center which will also be located to the new tower. U.S. Cellular has an existing uh, ground-mounted cabinets within a fenced-in closed area that is surrounded by landscaping. Again, the intent is 